Hello everyone. I'm a little late on my weekly update, but I wanted to show you everything that's blooming right now and looking so pretty. Hopefully there is the hope, hope, hope of rain on the forecast today, but you can see the hydrangeas are happily swaying in the breeze. These are Invincible Limetta. I posted these uh, the other day on Instagram and I said that these are my favorite hydrangea. You know, we all have, you know, usually whatever is in bloom is our current favorite. <laughs> but with this one, you know, I really think it, it might be my favorite. My bobos are going to bloom and then they might be my favorite. But here's why I love these. First of all, they grow um, super strong stems. These don't get very floppy for me. Um, and they're a nice compact size. I think they max out at four feet, three to four feet uh, tall and wide, something like that. They're a repeat bloomer, which is great. If you deadhead them, you can get kind of like a nice sporadic uh, second flush of blooms later in the season. But right now these fill this space and look so beautiful at a time when I really need um, some beautiful blooms in what's an otherwise very highly green space. I think I mentioned in my last video, I'd like to plant some taller alliums in here in the fall. So that way there's, you know, some purple flowers, maybe some irises in here um, to kind of bridge the gap. And then the bobos will come into bloom. And the back here is one of the dwarf butterfly bushes. I think it's Pugster Blue. I'm pretty sure. I love the silvery gray foliage on this one. And you can see it's uh, it's got buds all over it. So it'll be blooming pretty soon. But I love the Invincible Limetta. And I think that they're a great shrub. These grew really quickly for me. Probably about at their mature size. Maybe they'll get a little bit bigger, but definitely one to check out. Uh, I really love the dwarf size um, hydrangeas. And I think it, it it looks really nice with the bobos that have the panicle. So once these bloom, you can see that the buds are just starting on these. Um, it's kind of a, a nice combination to have the, um, you know, more traditional snowball type look of the hydrangea and then the panicles on the bobo. My urn has exploded. Oh my goodness gracious. So far, this is my favorite urn that I have done. I've not planted daisies in any kind of containers before. I wasn't sure how they would do. Um, these are the marguerite daisies and they're just doing fabulous. You can see that there's pollinators all over on there. Uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I think this is a repeat for me for sure. Um, if I like something, I am not. I'm not shy to repeat it. Um, uh, the only problem with that is sometimes, you know, you do that repeat and, and it never looks as good as it did that other time. Um, but I'm going to remember this combination. Um, if you missed in my last video, this is Marguerite Daisies. It's White Knight Sweet Alyssum. It is Blue Bacopa, which is really purple, but it's Blue Bacopa um, and Dichondra Silver Falls. I might trim on the dichondra silver falls and keep it more at the level that it is now because those will really trail which is great but it's going to be kind of concealed by the um, hydrangeas so i might kind of just keep it at that length i don't know maybe not we'll see if i do let that grow i plant this in the urn every year and it touches the soil get ready because it's gonna root in your soil. <laughs> These are very, very, very easy to propagate, easy to root plants. In fact, if you have a Dichondra Silver Falls in one of your containers and you take a little piece of it and wrap it around and poke it down into another part of your container down into the top of the soil, it will eventually root and you will have another Dichondra Silver Falls. Then you could clip the two and have one on this side and one on this side if you wanted to do that. It's kind of a cool way to make some more plants. I've done that in the past. I did trim back my rose, so I'm hoping to get another flush of blooms on that. I might throw down a couple handfuls of the Espoma rose tone at the base of the roses just to kind of give them a little boost of energy to try and push out some more blooms there. The window box is it's small. It's not like some, you know, big bodacious things 
trailing down in your face right now. The plants are starting to fill in. Uh, I'm really happy with it. And like I said in the last video, I really love to see the blooms from the inside of the family room. So uh, it's really pretty. This is uh, Echinacea purpurea. And it is my favorite. I have a lot of favorites I'm showing you in this video. <laughs> it's so tall and it looked so gorgeous last year. So you can see it's about ready to bust out and bloom right now. I did just trim out all of the daffodils. There was a lot of brown. There were still some that was still green. If they come back, great. If not, I understand. I won't be mad at it since I made that happen. <laughs> Um, this is the Rise Up Lilac Rose, and you can still see so many buds. This rose has been blooming nonstop for like a month now. It's just been amazing. I'm so happy with it. I'm kind of not, you know, really focusing on this side at all. You can see my collection of plants. Not really much has changed, but I did make an update to this area here. I should mention, I got these Alberta Spruce. Uh, probably back in the fall. I had not decided where to plant them. I'm going to plant them here. I had two boxwoods here and I got to tell you, I was seeing some stuff that made me believe that it might've been blight. I'm not positive. I'm taking no chances, but it made me panic because I have a lot of boxwoods here. These aren't in the ground, uh, the ones that were in these containers. So I'm not, um, I'm not scared. <laughs> I disposed of them properly. I bagged them. Um, they're gone. I took, you know, I took proper precautions here. I did scrub these containers out and then I'm going to replant with Alberta spruce because I don't want to put and take a chance on putting boxwoods right back in these containers again after this happened. So um, I'm going to try for the Alberta spruce because they've been waiting in my temporary plant places where I don't plant things. And I think that they would be really lovely here and kind of a nice textural diversion from all the boxwoods that I have. I have so many boxwoods here now that some other nice texture I think would be great. Um, that's a piece of rose. I was trimming these roses back as well. But this past weekend, I spent some time changing out some plants and changing some things around in the new parterre boxwood area that I am just loving. So first of all, in the corners, I had larger boxwoods. Um, I removed those. Those are actually in containers right back there. They weren't, first of all, they weren't sprinters and I kind of wanted something that all matched. But then secondly, um, you know that I'm having kind of an asymmetrical, I'm very big on symmetry, but I'm having an asymmetrical design here. So since I'm doing something completely different on this side than on this side, having the balls in the corners that were larger absolutely made it feel like I should have had, you know, complimenting ones in the corners. And I didn't want to do that. So I had a couple more little sprinters. This one's a little limey looking, um, probably because it was in it was its container for so very long and it, it was getting a bit nutrient deficient. So now that it's planted, I'm expecting it'll green up like the rest. It was just really anxious to get into the ground. So I've put those over here. Those are baby gems, by the way, which I really, really like baby gem box was that's the variety I have out front as well. Um, and those will definitely be planted somewhere in this area or somewhere in the back garden because I love them and they're nice sized shrubs. I don't want to, um, I don't want to waste those. I like them. They're pretty. So with this being a new area, it's going to be kind of like, you know, a first year kind of figuring out what I want to plant in these different sections. Initially, I thought all perennials. I got birds mad at me over here because I think that they have a home, uh, they have a little nest and a house in my neighbor's tree. So every time I approach, they get ticked off at me. Um, so anyway, um, I thought having perennials in here would be a great idea. And I still do want to do that, uh, but I'm not quite sure yet what I want. So, and then I had different, different things in each of the four corner 
which I absolutely didn't like. Uh, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? There's different things blooming at different times. It just looks off. The texture's off. So I purchased some geraniums online um, from Romance Gardens, who I really like a lot. I get a lot of annuals from them and they always ship them, I think, better than any uh, other place I've ever ordered annuals from online. So I encourage you to check out Romans Gardens if you are in the market for anything in particular. If I had shopped a little smarter and a little quicker, I mean, geraniums aren't hard to come by. <laughs> so I could have gone to a nursery, but now everything is picked over and you know, you can't find anything you want. So I got some beautiful zonal geraniums and this beautiful salmon color. I'm just gonna put a little blurb up on the screen so you can read about zonal ger geraniums. Zonal geraniums are different than seed geraniums. They are propagated from cuttings to ensure that you have strong, sturdy, healthy, uh, more hardy plants. Oh, there's all sorts of geraniums, you guys. I'm obsessed with all of them. I am I'm obsessed with the perennial varieties and the trailing ones and your regal geraniums, the Martha Washington geraniums, which are on the front porch right now. Uh, I'm just into them all. I, I love, love geraniums. So I, I think I might, um, if these perform really well, and I expect that they will, I, you know, dig these up and put them into the greenhouse for over winter and see if I could do that. I would love to try that. I had planted some geraniums from seed a couple years ago and last year I kept them in the greenhouse and they overwintered beautifully. I'm going to flip this around and show you. So I just have them over here right now. They were getting a little too hot and a little too dry because boy, we really do need the rain. But these are um, a maverick apple blossom that I started from seed and you can see on my little tag there. That's for my friend Katie at the Manor. I had mentioned her before. Um, she gave me this little plant tag when we met in Philadelphia. Um, she's the one with the gorgeous greenhouse floor that kind of inspired that for me. Um, so 2022, I sewed those and they are beautiful and I love them, but I kept them all winter uh, in these containers. So I would, I'm, you know, you ambitiously think and hope that you'll do these things. Maybe I'll be so tired at the end of the season that I yank the geraniums out and I say goodbye to you and I'm done and I'm tired and I'm ready for fall now. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but I love geranium so much. I think it will be worth digging them up and trying to save them. Why not? I think that it would be great. Um, so moving on, I also planted in this area um, some mealy sage. Okay, it's unplugged so blue. I have rock and play in the blue stuck in my mind. So then I get confused because I know they have other in the rock and series. The thing with these are here in zone seven, at least in my experience, they will get really woody. It's not like your meadow sage or your traditional type salvias, um, like May night and, and those types of sages uh, or those types of salvias that you, you know, can cut back and they will rebloom during the season. Totally different habit. So when, you know, the season is starting up, you'll see that there'll be little woody stumps all around where these were and you're gonna think it's dead. Uh, I urge you to try and leave them and see if they come back because if you're patient and you wait long enough, you'll start to see the tiniest little bit of green coming up from the roots. And before you know it, it's back again. Um, I've had my rock and play in the blues come back many times. It was, I had some in this area with my dahlias, but you know, I just dug all that whole area out and I figured we're starting from scratch here, so. And then I have, I had planted some moonbeam uh, Coreopsis tick seed in here. I don't know if that yellow is gonna vibrate with these colors, but that is a perennial and I don't really wanna pull it out. It's already in the season, so it's allowed to stay here. <laughs> and I'm going to see how it looks. Uh, so I'm gonna see how it looks. Maybe it'll look terrific, I don't know. And then in the center, I have the Gara and the Bishop of Dover. Uh, dahlias, which are just starting to break through the soil here. So I think it could be 
really beautiful. I like the uniformity of it all uh, and having everything match. So going forward, I know that that's something I want. I do think that I would like to plant some alliums throughout this area too for next year. I'm obsessed with the look of alliums. Um, I never really planted many of the tall ones in the past, even though I had every intention of doing so because I've been changing these areas around so much. Um, so this fall, it will be Operation Allium. <laughs> and then again, this area is just not great, but I have two new things I'll be planting, uh, a camellia and then a rhododendron. So I know these are gonna go somewhere here in this area and I'll be happy to have those plants. And then a bunch of other things I still need to plant. Um, this is geranium roseanne, and this is beautiful. This is fairy trail bride um, hydrangea. It's like a trailing hydrangea. It's really beautiful. So I'll be planting that probably in a pot somewhere, I think. Then I've just got a bunch of dwarf, um, dwarf butter butterfly bushes and a few other little things that need to be planted. Oh, I don't think I mentioned here. I had, when I had the vegetable garden here, you know, in the bench here, it kind of made sense. Um, the way the, the, the area was divided up and that there was gravel in this area. But now that I don't have the vegetable garden here, I want to have as much planting space as possible. So you can see, I just, I just have a piece of that echo border laid here just as a visual and these plants are definitely not where they're going to be. They're just kind of grouped here for now. Um, I'm going to start here and I'm going to have this bed go all the way down and have a great big large bed. The bench will be in here somewhere, um, but this will give me so much more space, so much more space. I don't need all this gravel here. I mean, there's just, it's just not serving any purpose for me at this point. Um, no, I need to, I need to utilize every inch of this space that I can. I'm not focusing or worried too much about this space at the moment because I have other areas I'm working on and other areas I'm trying to keep alive <laughs> during this very dry weather we've had. The winds are telling me that the rain that's on the forecast is going to happen and I really hope that it does. So to save some budget, hardy har har, because I bought these plants to begin with, I had some things that I didn't plant um, and I was going to buy all new geraniums for my window boxes but I decided to use the plants and annuals that were hanging about those leggy petunias I never planted <laughs> and plant them I give them a good haircut and fertilize them and you know devoted that budget to the geraniums that I put in the parterre there so if the window boxes don't look as great as they could or should well that's too darn bad <laughs> And I feel like I saved a little bit of money and I've shifted it to an area that I cared a little bit more about this year. Look at this guy. He doesn't care that I'm here. He's eating the grass. He's eating the clover. What little grass I have left anyway. It's so brown and dry. Here he goes. Um, so the sheet mulching. I've not done anything in this area as well, as you can see. It looks terrible. I'm of the mindset of we can only do so much am i right so we have to pay attention to those areas that need the attention complete that project or you know as close to it as we can to complete it's never complete and then move on this is just cardboard that's laying here this is not how it's going to be Ew, it looks like trash but it's there for right now i started to do the sheet mulching and then i used the soil somewhere else so now i need to bring in some more soil and this is just a hot mess and I'm I'm just not looking at it now this this is where the tree was and my clover is really starting to fill in only that guy there thinks that this is his microgreen buffet <laughs> and I don't mind it I plant the clover to distract the bunnies and keep them happy in the lawn and that's all good but it would be nice if this could grow a little bit like let it grow a little bit every day he comes out here and he grazes on the fresh tender uh new microgreens from the uh clover and it's really slow going and again no rain so no rain no no nothing you know no no flowers but this whole area is just making me so super happy right now i'm loving it he's gonna run away as soon as i come over hey you uh-huh right <laughs> this area is looking 
gorgeous right now. So beautiful. I'm still chipping away. Once I take some more gravel from that area that I was just showing you, I'll be able to fill in the remaining little bits of space here. But look, my hollyhocks are blooming. It's so pretty. You'll see I have cayenne pepper sprinkled all over because that little guy was poking around in here. But I love, love hollyhocks. And this is one of the reasons there's no rust spots this year is because of the lack of rain. So, oh gosh, this area is so dusty and musty looking right now. Um, Fox gloves that are spent, I leave those up for the most part and then they will drop and reseed and make little baby fox gloves. That's my orange tree. I did just give that some citrus tone because it looked like it really, really needed it. Um, and now I can see after just a couple days, see how it was starting to get a little limey looking and it's already starting to improve. So I just did that last week. And then this is a blueberry that's probably gonna get eaten. Oh my gosh, look, look at all my raspberries. Okay, I did harvest a bunch of these the other day. I'm gonna have to come back out again. This is raspberry shortcake. It's a dwarf raspberry. I love this shrub. I'm telling you, I have it in a black nursery pot inside this resin basket, and it stayed in here all year last year. It's self-pollinating, so you don't need another raspberry. This is as big as it gets, so it's perfect, and it's just wonderful. It'll uh, fruit the first year. No thorns. I mean, what more could you ask for? That's from Bushel and Berry. Totally, totally love this plant. Uh, the, the boys have just been getting such a kick out of all the berries on it. And I think that they are delicious. They have kind of like a hint of vanilla taste. They're good. It's a, it's a really nice shrub. I moved my fig tree here. I had my um, olive tree here, but uh, I moved the olive tree inside because I'm working on trying something with that, kind of making it a little less gangly and more controlled. So I gave that a really hard prune and we'll see how it turns out. I'd like it to be more of like a topiary ball kind of thing. Anyway, this needed some more light. It was kind of on the side of the garage and not getting enough light. So hopefully we can get some figs. It's looking good. This one is Little Miss Figgy. I always say getting figgy with it um, from Southern Living Plant Collection, who I love. Now I'm in the beginnings, the beginnings of worrying about this bed because it's a lot, it's a lot. I cut my very large drip tube because I'm so tired of seeing the great big drip tube um, all throughout the garden. And since the plants, plants have changed, the patterning of it has changed. So I'm just tired of looking at this tube. So I clipped it and I capped it. And then what I'm gonna do is, that's a half inch. I'm gonna run the quarter inch all throughout the garden once I have this planted up. Um, that's what I've been using lately and I think it's perfect. And I like how much thinner and malleable it is than the larger, more rigid tubing. And quite frankly, my garden is so small, coming out here with my hose link is like a joy for me, especially on a day like today. It's, it's breezy and it's beautiful. Um, so I usually go hand water when I can. I have some blue, uh, what is it? Blue Fortune Hummingbird Mint that I love. That's from last year. I just bought a few more of those. I'm gonna look at this as like my perennial border. I've got some echinacea you can see coming up. I've got, um, this is Verbena Vervain. You can see the way it's spreading here. I started this from seed and it is just a, oh gosh, you know what I just spotted? Let me show you guys. Ew, it's so gross. So these are like a fungal, a fungus. Ew. Look at this. Called stinkhorn. Oh my God, it's the ugliest things ever. Yuck. Um, probably growing through the mulch there, but ugh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of those. Disgusting. Anywho, uh, where was I? Verbena vervain. Okay, I started that from seed a couple years ago and it is spreading beautifully. You can imagine I need a nice top layer of some shredded hardwood mulch in this area because it's looking quite dry and that would certainly help with the weeds, which I've been hand pulling and the um, 
moisture retention. So, and then I've got my allium starting to come up here as well. A few things I'm still looking to plant. Um, this is the crepe myrtles. Oh, I did move this butterfly bush. It's a little yellowy in the middle, and that is because it was crammed right up against the third crepe myrtle down the line here, and it was not happy because I planted it there last year. Then I planted the three crepe myrtle, and in order to have it centered on the fence panel, it was like too close for comfort with that um, butterfly bush. Sorry, I have too much on my mind because uh, I'm over here looking at my uh, Major Wheeler Honeysuckle. You can see there it's starting to really take off now. That is a native. It has red trumpet-like flowers that are very appealing to uh, the pollinators, to hummingbirds. So I will be very anxious uh, to have that cover this trellis over the years. And what else? Is there anything else? My pile of plants in the greenhouse is shrinking. Would you like to, to, to just take a little walk inside? Let's go in. My plant pile is shrinking. I have an amaryllis because this amaryllis thinks that it is Christmas. <laughs> um, the conditions in this greenhouse have caused this amaryllis to bloom over and over and over again. And guess what? I'm here for it because it's beautiful. I don't care what season it is. That's a beautiful flower. And my myrtle topiary, you know what? I'm gonna fill up this, hold on, put my, I've been hugging my coffee this entire time. You know how important that is. So I'm going to add some water here into my little bubbler from the sink. Can I do this with you here? Hold on, maybe I could set this here and you can watch me water it. No, how can I do this with one hand? There we go. Now I'm filling my bubbler. This sink has been amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. I use it every single day, multiple times a day. Best, best thing ever. Please excuse my gardener's um, manicure here. I'll give the olive a little, little water there too. All right, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yes, my nails, I had to clip them all the other day. My cuticles are nasty and just, you know how it goes. You get those dirt, that dirt under your nails and it's hard to come out. Oh, but guess what? This nail brush, I got this from Garrett Wade. This is a great nail brush. The bristles are so tough and it really does get a lot of the grime out. I recommend that. <laughs> Can I show you guys this little radio? I think I did it, so cute. I can't play any music though because then I'll get flagged for copyright. Super cute. Got a solar panel in the top. I got this on Amazon and I thought, how cute would it be to have a little radio with a solar panel? I think I showed you that, so I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> um, my passion flower vine has now decided, and I put a little bit of fishing line here to help it along, to grow on this little bar all the way from this one and look i've got a little passion fruit that's amazing to me look there's buds all over just amazing 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 i did pick this up the other day from home depot you guys know how tech geeky i am this is a um like a wi-fi system for my irrigation so I, mine is very manual right now and I would love to be able to ask Alexa or, you know, ask my robot servant to water my plants for me. <laughs> I still have many things in here um, and not as many, not as many. I'm chipping away. Uh, these lemon cypress, they are beautiful. I thought that they might get fried up in here and not like it, but I think because I have this little ledge over here protecting them from the super, super direct, scorching hot sun, um, they're happy and that's good. You know, I got a freaking, I got a freaking Sonos in here. I'm getting a little transistor radio when I have a Sonos in here. If there's one thing I am, it is an audiophile. I have speakers in every room of the house. They are all 
Wi-Fi. I, I just, I got to have music all day, all the time, all always. I love my music. I've been calling this my greenhouse snack berry. Look at this. Look at these blueberries. Yum. Yum. This is jelly bean. I have the tag in here. That was my knees. My knees always crack. Hold on. I have the tag. I think I saw the tag over here. No, Perpetua. Perpetua is outside. And this is jelly bean. And it's a dwarf from Bushel and Berry. Absolutely love it. I come out here and I pick off a few little blueberries every day. I wasn't sure. It looks like it's a little limey. This, uh, you know, this needs some berry tone. So I'm going to have to put some berry tone on it. But it's been pushing out the berries and I'm happy about that. And I've got lemons on my lemon tree. This is a Meyer lemon. And I've got lemons. I can't believe it. I've never had lemons before. I've had this for two years, not a single lemon. And now I've got lemons. Life gave me lemons. I should make some lemonade. Look how cute these are. Little baby hens and chicks. Super cute. I took them off this mama plant. They were starting to dangle down. So I just snipped them, laid them on top of the soil, and they're already taking root. So cute. I have hen and chicks in my hen, right? Because why not? <laughs> oh, and then here is my clematis that Mark got me for Easter. Don't mind the bird poopy on the windows. But hello, that, uh, that took off, I'd say. <laughs> Quick walk around in here and then I'm gonna head in, but I wanted to give you guys an update of how everything is coming along. In this bed here, I've got some beautiful cabbage, beautiful cabbage, some nasturtiums, some garlic. I did just cut the scapes out. Um, hold on. I see that I missed one or two. So I want to cut these off. If you've got garlic, hard neck garlic, this is music garlic, cut these scapes all the way off. You can make a nice pesto with these, um, cook with them. Very tasty, but you don't want to leave these on because this will open up and flower and that's going to take away energy from your garlic bulb and you want all the energy going to your garlic bulb. So I need to come out and clip the rest off that I missed. I've got some zinnias mixed in here, calendula, borage. My strawberry is looking a little dry. I did just cut back my new Dawn Rose. I'm gonna clip up a little bit more, but I needed a ladder and I didn't have one. Just cut back my pansies. They are gonna be done soon. You know, pansies don't love the hot, hot heat so much. But I could also put them in a shady spot and try and keep them for fall. That's definitely something uh, I, I might do. And then my potatoes, looking fabulous. There's another limetta back there. I got some cucumbers on this little trellis here. All sorts of herbs and some peppers in this bed here. And then this had rhubarb in it. I pulled the rhubarb because it was really receded in the pot. I really wanted to get my rhubarb in the ground. Um, I had started it as a Victoria rhubarb in this pot a couple years ago. And yeah, um, I don't know what maybe put it in a pot. I just did. And uh, I have a clump of it now back there behind the rhubarb forcer, which makes sense. Um, so that's that. I couldn't stand looking at it. It's one sad floppy leaf. So I've got some mint the dichondra silver falls, some oregano, and some sad looking strawberries that I cut out of that container over there. Um, and they are just bouncing back now. Some zinnias. This is perfusion white um, zinnias, which are like a more very short, like front of the border kind of zinnia. I grew those last year from seed as well. And they were one of my absolute favorites. But you know what, you guys, it might not be full and huge and bursting at the seams right now this is it looks good but april 7th i look back april 7th was when i started rearranging this whole area 
the April 7th, this was empty. So for being empty on April 7th to this today, I'd say I'm pretty happy with that, like beyond happy. Okay, that was it. I gotta clean my fountain. That was it, that was my update. My sweet peas have massive stems. Look at this. These are Mammoth Choice Mix. So I'm not sure of the exact variety, but they're from Johnny's Seeds and they are the Mammoth Choice and they are truly mammoth. This is a different uh, type of sweet pea. The name escapes me super dainty, not long stems, but a really pretty little vine mixed in here with the roses. But that's my little update. I will be back next week for sure to show you all of the good and the bad and everything in between. And I hope that you, and I hope more good than bad <laughs> for me and for you. And I hope you guys are all getting out and enjoying your gardens. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would or share with a local garden friend in New Jersey. It's very helpful to have resources that are in your area that are going through some of the same, um, you know, climate conditions, spotted lantern flag conditions, whatever the case may be. All right. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.